It is now exactly one year since the Jubilee government was sworn into office and security, or the lack of it, has proven to be one of the biggest headaches that this young administration has had to grapple with for the last 12 months. The threat of terror has shaken this nation to the core. And tonight, KTN's Ferdinand Omondi begins our series, The Jubilee Scorecard, with a look at this thorn in the flesh of the Jubilee government. Sheikh Abu Bakr Sharif, alias Makaburi. When news initially spread about his death on the evening of April 1st this year, many thought it was a sadistic April Fool's Day prank. It turned out it was not. Makaburi supporters, or those who analysts have called fundamental Muslims or Salafists, want revenge, life for life, blood for blood. And this has now become a vicious circle, extremists accusing non-believers of persecuting Islam, after which they savagely attack and kill the innocent at every available opportunity. <laughs> The response from the police has often been major crackdowns and rounding up of suspects in pursuit of the criminals, followed by mysterious deaths, and after that, accusations and counter accusations. Yesterday is nothing short of it being anything else except terrorism. The government is pretty alert to deal with any individual, to deal with any group. The latest crackdown in East Lee, Nairobi to weed out illegal aliens and round up suspects is generating equal heat. At least 1,000 people have been arrested and questioned. Many believe it is justified. Others see it as police harassment and religious profiling, making the fight on terror a really hard nut to crack for the state. The need to stamp out terrorism cannot be overestimated. <laughs> Thousands of innocent civilians have died at the hands of terrorists who ironically claim theirs is justice. Kenya's first major encounters with terror was by association. The 1998 bomb attack targeted U.S. citizens at their embassy in Nairobi. 213 Kenyans died. In 2002, the bomb that exploded at a hotel in Kikambala along the north coast was targeting Israeli lives, yet incredibly, 14 Kenyans were killed. However, the attack of the Westgate Mall in Nairobi in September 2013 changed the entire narrative. Although it happened at an Israeli-owned mall, this was an attack on Kenyans for Kenya's action. Al-Shabaab had threatened to retaliate for Kenya's incursion into Somalia, and they did. Yet KDF was forced to enter Somalia to protect its citizens and interests following a series of kidnappings in Kenyan territory, especially the coast region, which targeted tourists for ransom. Al Shabaab remains the biggest terror threat to Kenya, amplified by its affiliation to Al Qaeda, a global Islamist militant organization born in Pakistan. Sheikh Makaburi is thought to have been a key ally of Al Shabaab generals in Somalia, supplying them with intelligence, personnel, and possibly coordinating some attacks in his own country. Prior to Makaburi's death, police stormed Masjid Musa and arrested over 100 people. It was a convention which security branded a recruitment exercise. This flag, which has been used by Al-Shabaab, was hoisted defiantly in areas around the mosque. Raiding a mosque was unheard of before and drew sharp reactions, but police insist they have a duty to thwart crime at the source regardless of the location. The security agents will do everything possible to ensure that Kenyans living in this county live safely. The audacity across the board has, has, tight, has strengthened the resolve of, of others. And I think it is extremely a dangerous trend. There is no way we can have unharmed the Kang and we say the police can go and arrest him handed. We have to deal with them very firmly. This year alone, the country has already suffered an attack in which gunmen raided and killed four people at a church in Likoni in the south coast. Police maintained it was a normal crime, but later hunted down the suspects and shot them dead. Police have also smothered what could have been a mass attack by intercepting six cylinder bombs with 173 kilograms of TNT, among other ammunition. While the war on terror must be fought, the manner in which it is being fought remains a tight debate that, if not handled well, could be harmful to the nation's social fabric. 
The unsolved killings of radical preachers has also reduced goodwill in the war on terror amid allegations of extrajudicial killings and human rights abuses. A battle that the Jubilee government has failed to win in the first year in office but is still facing a huge battle to eventually win the war on terror. Ferdinand Mundi, KTN, Mombasa.